Hello everyone, I'm Dennis, welcome back to The Bindery. Today I'm starting on a project I hope will live up to that dramatic intro. It's going to be a fun challenge, though this time I may have bitten off a little more than I can chew. But first, let me explain what I have in mind. As you may have guessed, Dune is one of my favorite books of all time, and I've always wanted to take a copy and rebind it into something really special. Of course, being the book nerd that I am, I didn't want to just recover any old paperback. I wanted to get the oldest copy of Dune I could find, maybe even one that wasn't in the best condition. At first I thought I'd get my hands on a first edition, but I gave up on that pretty quick. Holy crap. Next I started looking at the early book club editions. Those were copies of Dune that were printed starting in the 1970s, a few years after the original publication. But when I started looking, even the book club editions were pretty expensive. I wasn't sure I'd even be able to get this project started, but then I hit upon a copy that was listed at $11.98. No picture. The description said it's missing the dust jacket. It might even have writing in it. But I thought, what the heck? For 12 bucks, let's give it a shot. And through the magic of YouTube, I've got the package right here. Let's open it up and have a look and see what we've got. All in one piece, hopefully. All right, let's take a look at it. I can see right away that the front cover board is uh, pretty damaged here. At the tail, a little bit of rubbing here from where it sat on a shelf. And, uh, and there's a little headband at the top here. That's interesting, but not at the bottom. And the foredge, it's got this deckled foredge. Let's take a look on the inside. There's an Ex Libra stamp on the fly leaf. Right away, I can see that this first signature has come away from the spine. The text itself seems to be in good shape. It looks like there's quite a bit of adhesive between the signatures. It's to be a bit of a challenge separating those. Oh, and we've got some paper damage here in the top corner. Yeah, some of these pages are a little crunchy. And a little water damage here in the gutter on the back cover. Overall, though, I do think this is going to be workable. I think we can make this go. So these book club editions do say copyright 1965, but that's not the date that this book was actually printed. But there is a way to find out. At the back, there's a code printed right down in the gutter with a number and a letter. The letter corresponds to a year, and the number is the week of the year. So if I can hold this open here, you'll see that the code in this book is 33R. And that corresponds to August of 1975. It's not the earliest edition. I think these started in 1971, but it's almost 50 years old, and that's pretty cool. While I was waiting for this book to arrive, I did a little bit of design brainstorming in my notebook. My concept for this binding will be to do something similar to what Herbert himself did with the world of Dune. He combined elements of actual cultures and histories from Earth to create his science fiction world. And interestingly, one important element he retained was books. And we see those both in the novel and portrayed in film. I'd like to do something similar and incorporate elements from several bookbinding traditions to create a singular binding like nothing else. But before I can get to any of that fun stuff, I need to disassemble this book, see what sort of repairs it needs, and then get to work at putting it back together again. So the first thing I need to do is to get the book out of its cover. To do that, I'm just going to cut along the paste downs at the gutter, being careful not to damage the text. Spider web. No spiders, though. There it is. We can see just a pasted on headband at the top. Nothing at the bottom. Doesn't look like it was ever there. So I'd like to remove this spine lining. This looks like some sort of a hot melt adhesive. So I'm going to try some heat to remove it. To do that, I'm just going to reverse the text block in the cover and put it in the press. I'm just slowly working away with a heat gun and using my micro spatula and I've got a little dental pick here as well. Uh, just using that to pick out as much of the adhesive as I can. The heat is loosening up the old adhesive, but it's pretty dried and crusty. Luckily there's not too much of it. Just taking my time, working slowly, I don't want to damage the text. Hopefully it won't take too long. So I'm reasonably confident that I'm going to be able to get those separated, but I have a different issue. The way this book was bound, 
each of the signature was split along the spine in a couple of different areas. The signatures are only actually intact along a strip here and a very narrow strip here. That seems to have been done so that the glue would key down into the paper, thereby holding all the pages in place. But that leaves me with the problem of trying to figure out how to work with these signatures that have all been basically split. I guess the first thing will be to get this fully unbound and then take a look at the signatures individually and see if I can do some sort of repair work to them. Try a little bit more heat and see if I can get this to release. Okay, that's the first signature. I'm definitely going to have to do some repairs. Okay, for better or for worse, I now have an unbound copy of Dune with signatures of questionable integrity. I'm going to have to do a little homework on the best way to handle these, but that's a tomorrow Dennis problem. Today Dennis is going to go have a cup of tea. Well, it's a new day and I've done some thinking on how I want to tackle repairing this book. Basically I've got maybe three options here, the most drastic of which would be to literally cut off the spine edge of all the signatures, creating effectively just a book of loose leaves, and then do just a strictly adhesive binding, like a double fan binding, a perfect binding, something like that. But in my mind, that's a step down from what was originally there, and I would have been better off just to do some light repair work and leave the binding as it was. But having it taken apart now, I want to create a better, stronger binding. And so that means some repair work. For that, really, I have two options both of which involve pasting on some reinforcing paper. Now I could either do a simple guard that goes around the back of each signature, but considering the amount of damage that's been done by this slitting process, I don't think that would be enough. What I really think I need to do is separate all the individual leaves and then repair all the damage on every single page. That way I'd effectively have a brand new book with all new paper that would be fully supported for all of the sewing. To do that though is going to be a labor intensive process to say the least. So, I better get at it. I think I'll swap out my cutting mat for my litho stone. The stone's a lot less likely to be damaged by the heat gun. So I think my approach here is going to try to find the center of the signature, open it up and apply heat to the old adhesive that's on the back. Hopefully that will soften the adhesive enough to flatten the signature and then separate each individual leaf. And at the same time, I can hopefully remove as much adhesive as possible and get back down to the original paper. So step one seems to have worked. The adhesive has softened enough to allow the signature to open flat. Now I'm going to use my micro spatula to get in underneath each individual leaf and using the heat on the back, see if I can separate the pages. Okay, so it can be done. Hopefully you can see the amount of damage that's been done to these pages, but they are still hanging together in a couple of places. I'll have a significant amount of repair work to do to bring it back, but I think it's doable, but it's going to take a while. So that's one signature, all separated. That took about 20 minutes, and with 14, 16 more signatures to go, well, you can do the math. I'm going to be here a while.
that was a pile of work, no question, but I think it's going to be worth it. I managed to get all the pages apart without inflicting any additional damage. There weren't very many that were completely separated, like this title page, maybe four or five. So my next challenge will be repairing all of these, which may take even longer. But before I can do that, I think I want to clean off any of the excess adhesive. I don't want any crunchy chunks left inside the binding, so I'll get to work on that. I don't want to do any extra damage to the paper in this process, so I take my time either carefully scraping it away with the micro spatula or using the heat to soften it up. Eventually I found that just scraping away the glue cold was no more damaging than using the heat gun and was quite a bit faster. With faster being a relative term, obviously. Well, that was a lot of work. I don't know how long the final cut of this will be, but that was about seven hours of picking away little crusty dried boogers of glue. But what I'm left with now is an unbound, adhesive-free copy of Dune, broken out into 17 signatures, each with eight leaves. So if my math is correct, that's 136 individual leaves, each and every one of which is gonna require some level of repair. So I better get started on that. Let me show you how I'm gonna do it. So here I've got the materials I'm going to be using to repair the pages. They're really very simple. The adhesive that I'll be using is a simple wheat starch paste. It's simply a powder that I mix with water and cook in a double boiler until it reaches the right consistency. The benefit of using paste is that it's completely archival and fully reversible with water as well. So it's a really safe and easy adhesive to use. And the material I'll use to actually repair all the tears is this Japanese Kozo paper. It's about 26 GSM. But despite that, it's a lot stronger than a traditional wood pulp paper or even cotton paper. And that thinness is important because I'm going to be gluing a lot of additional material into the spine of the book and it could contribute a lot to the swell if I used a thicker paper. But I've got some ideas on how to deal with that, so more on that later. For leaves that have quite a bit of damage and large pieces of paper missing, as well as the outer and inner leaves of every signature, I'll use strips one centimeter wide. For those leaves that have only minor damage, I'll use very narrow strips just to bridge the gap where the paper is damaged. For now I'm going to get to work on cutting down all of my repair strips and then getting those all pasted into place. With 136 leaves to repair, that's a lot of cutting and pasting. Applying the repair paper is straightforward. I brush a thin layer of paste onto the strip of Kozo, then use tweezers to lift it off the waste paper pad. The strips are small and turn almost completely transparent when pasted out, but this Kozo paper is surprisingly strong. I carefully lay the repair strip in position and gently pat it down. Then I rub it down firmly with my bone folder and a piece of parchment paper before setting it aside to dry just under its own weight. Then it's just a matter of repeating the process for every single sheet. Okay, those are all dry now, and I'm not gonna lie, that was a lot of work. 
I figure I've got about 20 hours of labor into this project so far, and I'm not even at the point where I can start putting this book back together. It may not look like it, but I'm doing my best to try and keep these signatures organized by alternating the sheets as I put them in the pile. And then I can go ahead and collate these back together into signatures and get them folded and ready for the next stages. I've still got a bit more repair work to do to fix these small tears. And then I need to trim off all the excess repair paper on all of the sheets. And then, finally, I'll be at the point where I can start trying to put this book back together. So to repair these small tears, I'm going to add a little bit of paste just in the overlapping fibers of the paper. But because these are on the corners of the page, they're going to get handled a fair bit. So I'll reinforce those with some of the same Japanese paper. By tearing off a small piece for the repair patch, the fibers will create a feathered edge that will help blend in a little bit better. And with that, the repairs are done. Now I just need to get everything collated and put back together. And then I can finally evaluate just how much swell all this additional repair paper has created. So I've collated all the signatures individually now it's a matter of putting them all back into sequence so that the book runs from page 1 to page 507. So with the signatures laid out like this, you can see that the numbers run in sequence from here 34 to 35, 66 to 67, and so on and so forth. So I know that I've got them all in sequence correctly. It's now time to deal with the swell created by all this extra paper. I can feel a slight bump in the center of each signature. And so to mitigate that, I'm going to put these into one single stack, put them into the big press, and hopefully I'll be able to squeeze the new paper into the old paper and reduce the thickness a little bit. I'll alternate the signatures so that I can separate them again easily later. With them piled up like that, you can see what I mean. There's quite a bit of additional thickness in the center of the book compared to the sides. I hope I haven't created more problems for myself than I tried to solve. I adjusted those a bit to make sure that everything is lined up nice and straight. Now it's time to let Mr. Richie do his thing, and we'll check back on those tomorrow. Well, those have had a good long rest now. Let's get them out of here and take a look at them. Well, I can see right away that the additional thickness has really been reduced. It hasn't been completely eliminated. I can still feel a slight hump in the center, but the overall thickness is much more uniform across the entire text block. So with that sorted out, it's time to get these folded back into signatures, and then I'll put them back in the press to try and control that swell even more. So first things first, I just want to get these arranged properly. My little trick of reversing the signatures is working well to help me get things sorted out. I'll be sure to take my time in folding these signatures. 
I don't intend to trim the book at all. I want to maintain the original pages as they are. And so I want to make sure that I've folded them symmetrically, which will achieve a nice appearance on the foredge, just like in the original binding. My final step before I can actually get back to binding this book is to get these back in the press to help control the swell on the spine, and then tomorrow I'll finally be ready to get started on the actual binding. Well, that's done a really good job in flattening the signatures. I never cease to be impressed by the difference pressing the signatures will make. I'm happy with how those torn pages got repaired. The Japanese paper has basically disappeared, and while they're not perfect, they're structurally sound, and that's the important part. To lay out the sewing stations, I'm going to put the book into the press between a couple of boards. So I'm going to be sewing the book on five tapes. I'll be using this linen tape as the support material. I'll lay out my sewing stations with a pencil here, mostly for illustration purposes. I'll be actually piercing those from the inside. But the most important mark is this diagonal line, which will act as a visual cue to help me keep all of my signatures in order. To pierce the holes, I'll use an awl in my collapsible piercing cradle. If you'd like to make one of these of your own, I've got a video on that. Just click the link up above. Starting from the back of the book, I open each signature to make sure all the pages are aligned right to the head of the book, and then using my template, I'll simply pierce all the sewing holes. With that one done, I'll place it on the bench facing up, and then work my way from the back of the book to the front, carefully piercing the holes as I go. You can see I've still got all the signatures in order, and my holes matched up with the marks that I laid out. Okay, finally it's time to get sewing, and that means setting up the sewing frame. These little H-shaped pieces of brass are called sewing keys, and by wrapping the tape in and out, it holds it in tension without any knots. I've attached some loops of linen tape to the crossbar, which gives me a place to pin my sewing tapes in place. I'll adjust the spacing using my sewing template, and then I'll lock everything in place with the wooden insert. I can then turn the knobs on the posts of the sewing frame to raise the crossbar, which gives tension to the sewing tape. To 
sew the book, I'm going to use the number 18 bookbinder's needle. A very light linen thread, this is 35-3, which hopefully will help control the swell, and a bit of beeswax. I like to raise my work up on a couple of pieces of wood. It gives me a little bit more clearance when sewing the first couple of signatures. I'll place my stack of signatures on my right. That way I can flip the signatures over one at a time, working from the back of the book forwards. I'll leave plenty of extra thread at the first kettle stitch, as I haven't yet made my end papers and I'll need it to attach those later. After sewing each signature, I'll use my bone folder to press the sewing thread firmly into the paper. This is another technique to help keep the swell under control. For now, I'll forego tying off the first kettle stitch. I'll do that later when I attach the end papers. So I've got one more trick up my sleeve to try and control the swell in this book. The first three signatures I sewed in traditional all-along sewing, but for the middle section I'm going to be doing two-on sewing, in which I add two signatures at a time and alternate my sewing back and forth between those two. This effectively cuts the amount of thread inside the book in half, and while it does compromise a little bit on strength, I think with the five sewing tapes and the end bands, which I'll be sewing on later, that's going to be more than strong enough for this book. There it is. Well, it's been quite a journey to start this book's transformation, but I think it's going to be worth it. So thank you for sticking with me to the end. I confess that for a while I was worried you'd see me with no more than a pile of crusty, tattered pages, but instead it's looking really good and I'm excited for the next steps. If you are too, then why not give the video a like, and maybe subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss part two. This book still needs a lot of work after all, like custom end papers, end bands, covers, and some Dune-inspired embellishments, so you won't want to miss it.
For those of you who might like to support me directly, the easiest way to do that is to simply buy me a coffee. You'll find a link in the video's description. Cheers! So until next time, I'm Dennis, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part two.